Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's the Damn, it was that was sorry. Angela Yee, like, Charlamagne the God. We on the it up right away. <laughs> we got a special guest in the building, La Lizzie. Hey, hi everybody. Good morning. Hey, Lala. You looking all morning. slim and trim? Thank you. I appreciate. You have that. to. All them thirst traps you be posting on the gram. I've been light on the gram lately. I've been kind of light on the gram lately. <laughs> no, you lately. were at Fashion Week. You know, you got to be okay. heavy on the gram for Fashion Week. Yeah, I was. I was heavy, but that's not necessarily like. Thirst trapping. That's more just like posting. She like, look, when I post, it's a thirst trap. It is what it is. You could be in a sweatsuit. <laughs> well, thank you. What up, Lala? How you feeling? I feel good. I'm, I'm tired. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I'm working all the time. Just like, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm tired. It's like, I thought when I wrapped BMF, which we wrapped that in like July, mm -hmm. I was like, all right. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of time, mm -hmm. but it just never really works out like that, which is a blessing, it's a good but it's thing. like mm -hmm. so many other things going on, but I like to stay active. And you're a series regular on BMF now, right? Series regular, so season Congrats. two is going to premiere in January. The documentary just came out, the BMF documentary, mm -hmm. and that's kind of just getting people prepared for season two, which will come out in um, January. Were you in Atlanta when BMF was tearing the city up? Was you? I was. I was there, like in and out. So I remember mm -hmm. some of it. I remember, like, I, w I was, you know, younger at the time, but I do remember sneaking into a couple parties mm -hmm. and being like, "What's going on in here? Like, this mm -hmm. is crazy." And, yeah, I remember some of it, but now I'm really in tune because I did so much. I knew about them, obviously, but so much research about Meech and Terry and just the whole movement, especially being a part of BMF. Mm -hmm. Because on season two, I play a character named Markeisha. Now, Markeisha is Terry's girlfriend who's kind of the one who really introduces him to how to do the game correctly and kind of introduces him to becoming a man because he was they were really young. He was like late teens mm -hmm. and she's like an older girlfriend that's like no if you want to step up this is what you need to do in everything in life appearance mm -hmm. and sex and this and that so she's just like elevating terry's game and it's crazy because they stayed together pretty much the whole way through and got back together when terry came out of jail mm -hmm. wow and so it's a woman that steps it up and upgrades him isn't it always you already know that <laughs> Look, you know how that so wait so more sex scenes i heard you say oh, sex. More sex so you got more sex scenes <laughs> wow la la is coming back for the 2023 <laughs> which wow. episode wow. Wow. you bringing more that hashtag sexy. back <laughs> bringing that hashtag back <laughs> it's, it's, it's definitely more sex scenes new person though because terry's played by uh da vinci so New person on the other side mm -hmm. of it, but yeah. More Does sexy. that ever get uncomfortable and awkward? It's always. When is it not because uncomfortable? That's the homie. You, 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 you was homie. Y'all go out sometimes. It's and then gotta never perform. not uncomfortable. Like at the end of the day, even on a close set, it's still a close set could still be like five to ten people. So when mm -hmm. people say, "Oh, close set," it's not just me and him. You still got the camera, the sound, producer, director, whatever. So it's still people in there. Yeah, it's it's awkward and sex scenes are never how people see them on TV. Like mm -hmm. on TV it's flowing, you like, oh, are they really doing something? When you're <laughs> doing that, it's like cut, stand here, do this, put your leg here, arm here. Like it's not how people it's, it's not a lot just of like, direction. Yeah, it's not just like action and y'all go ahead yeah, and do yeah, your yeah. thing. I literally have full blown debates and arguments with people who are telling me like Nah, y'all really having sex. I'm like, you're telling me, like, I'm doing it. They let, like, nah, nah, that's real, that's real. Then somebody told me the other day, they was like, but, I mean, you could tell them, right, if, like, you really wanted to do it for real, though, right? I'm what like, mean? what why is wrong you, with you? Why would you really like, want to do it? Why would you, like, what? But people really... You well, you're doing a great job really acting. That. That's Thank what that you. means. Thank you're doing you. a great job Thank acting. You. Thank you. I By the way, that's that. just them saying, so that's, that's a porno. If you did, exactly. Like, I'm like, what? I'm like what HR would be like, right. what is going on in Lit, here? Lala, so. you just say thank you. That means I'm a wonderful actor. Well, thank you. And it looks like that I'm really real, doing it. Thank the you. fact that you believe that. Thank how, you. How do you prepare yourself for that? Like, do you have to talk to him? Like, I'm about to kiss you. Like, how does that yeah, happen? Yeah, you guys, well, first of all, you have rehearsals before. And so you then rehearse it. You, you have, have to rehearse it. But you rehearse it with, you know, sweatsuit, your clothes on, and just make sure you're comfortable. Mm -hmm. And then you have a sidebar with the person. Like, all right, so how you want to do this? Like, I don't want to make it uncomfortable for you and vice versa. So let's work through this together, it becomes more like a choreographed thing, almost mm -hmm. like a dance, kind of like, okay, then put your hand here, then move, and this. And a lot of times, what females don't know, if you're uncomfortable about something, it's great because your co-star can help you, meaning like, I don't like this part of my body, can you just put your hand right there so that when the camera comes, so you work together to try to make it look great. Isn't it easier being single and having to do stuff like this too, so you don't have to go home and be like, so today on set. <laughs> She knows. You used to have to have those conversations? <laughs> she knows. Um, 
not anymore. Who am I having a conversation well, I'm saying you with used now? To? Well, I mean, out of respect for the person I was with, I would talk like I'm not just gonna oh, yeah. let him turn the TV on and see. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. he's he says he never watched them, but who knows? You know, maybe, maybe not. But and, and these are acting now too. Did you have any sex? Wait, scenes did you have sex scenes? I didn't know sex scenes. Okay, no. just so let me ask you a question because <laughs> you're a married man. Mm -hmm. Would you do a sex scene? Um, uh -oh. yeah. You heard his voice. I don't think it would be believable. So high. You yeah. don't think yeah. it would be believable? Nah, because him and his wife were so public. You know right. what I mean? Like they do oh, so much together. Oh, people wouldn't buy into yeah, him I wouldn't, being I wouldn't, with somebody. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't believe I, that. I, I mean, we would. I would do it, but she would be uncomfortable. She would be comfortable with it. As, she as would long, be comfortable. As long as she would be, and I think she would be. She wouldn't have a okay. problem with it. Yeah, when okay. they do the Breakfast Club series and they have their sex scene, they might have to do it and have a little. But you know what? The truth is, I met so many guys, and this is real talk, who have told me like, lie. I couldn't be with somebody like you who has filmed sex scenes before. Like, wow. there are guys that are very uncomfortable with that. Mm -hmm. Like, my girl could never... And I'm like, but this is my career. This is what I do for a living. And when you're on a show and you're in a relationship with somebody at some point, you're normally going to have to mm -hmm. have sex with the person I you're in a relationship watch with. It. I wouldn't okay. mind it. But I just couldn't, couldn't watch it. it. I couldn't watch that scene. Like, okay. cover my eyes when, that, when it comes on. Because I don't want to see... Your, your girl or your wife and even though you know it's down. just straight acting and none of it is like still kissing though okay yeah, still, he's still touching your body he's still grabbing your ass <laughs> and, Ooh, and if it's a scene where she has to be that. like my man never did it like this <laughs> I, I don't <laughs> believe men care real. as much as they say and I'm saying oh, this respectfully because really? okay. I know that you're your friend but right. <laughs> Kim's been married four times she got a sex tape you know what I mean okay. I don't think guys care as much as they they act say like they, they do and but when it comes down to it They'll, you know, they'll be fine okay. after a while. All right. All right. And you also <laughs> had this Intoya Brown docuseries, right? Yes. So yes. We're working on that. 50 and I are producing that, which I'm mm -hmm. so excited about. Um, you know, the thing about producing, too, though, is there's so many layers and it takes a while. Like, we've been wanting to get this going for a while. And it's, it's, it is happening really soon. And I'm excited about it. But it's not like, you know, when I reached out to her and I got the life rights, you know, in my mind, it's like, I got them. We're just going to go. But mm -hmm. it's so much in, in writing the scripts and getting prepared. And when you're doing something like that, it's got to be done right. And she's executive producing it with us. So we just want to make sure we get it right. That's mm -hmm. not something that you just rush and, and play around with. Is you and 50 doing it? Yeah, 50 wow. and I are doing it together. And Centoya is also an EP on it. It was crazy because I got the life rights first. I just literally DM'd her and was like, I'm fascinated by your story. I would love to meet with you. And we talked and she said she wanted to do it with me. And it was funny because I was like, well, start thinking of producing partners. Like, we mm -hmm. have this one, that one, that one. Like, who would you like to work with? And her and her husband called me and was like, there's no other person we want to do this with except 50 Cent. And wow. I was like, that was music to my ears because that makes my life a lot easier. Like, I mean, right I'm now. like, that's the easiest thing in the world because Fifth and I do everything together. Mm -hmm. So it worked out. But I was like, wow, out of everybody, they just felt like he would be the one to really tell that story correctly probably because of the power of power exactly yeah. and they love power and you know canaan and bmf mm -hmm. and all of it so it's been great have and i'm glad that you have her as an executive producer mm -hmm. too you know people were talking about like all the Dahmer stuff that's coming right. out and how people are affected and you know how the family's not getting anything yeah. and things like that yeah that was that's that's a real thing and my thing is that when you're talking about somebody's experience and the person is you know, blessed to still be alive and be here to tell us about that experience. How are you not going to that person to talk to them about their experience? Mm -hmm. Like right. you going to Google to say, how did she feel in this moment? No, I'm calling Satoya. Like, tell me how you felt in this gotcha. moment. And it just makes the story mo so much more authentic and, and real and genuine. Have, yeah. have you committed yourself to your work? Like, do you even care about a love life at this point? Or is it just all business? You know what? <laughs> When it gets cold outside, then I care about the love and you life. Cuddle. <laughs> then I'm like, hold up, all this work ain't shit because right now I want. Yeah. It's, it's cold outside. When you're not so, working, you need a little. Yeah. Then I'm like, damn. Time. Like summertime, I'm like, this is my time to shine. Yeah. But then when it's winter, I'm like, nah. Unless this you, caught the, you, know, you yeah. caught the you bouquet, dating? so that means that at some point is you're that supposed what that to be next. Yeah, I caught. We, I, we went to Notorious Wedding mm -hmm. and I caught the bouquet. So Imagine. I don't, I'll never get married Are you again. dating? No, I'm not. You know, I'm really not dating. It's so crazy. I'm not. I don't know. It's just like, there's nothing has come my way that's really caught my... I'm sure there's thousands of dudes in the DMs, thousands of dudes trying to holler at you. But thousands of dudes doesn't mean it's the right dude or mm -hmm. the one that you're like willing to take time out of your schedule to make time for. I mean, yeah. That th thousands of dudes are in Angela's DM. I mean, it's thousands of dudes all over the place, but it's got to be the right. Too, but <laughs> don't, it's nobody be, he don't even pay you no money. No, no, no. It's got to be. It's got to okay. be the right. Don't, don't speed past the. I'll never get married again, though. I'm never getting married again. Damn. Wow. 
I'm not, you know, it's one of those things in life that I feel like I could check it off. Like, mm -hmm. okay, I did that. You mm -hmm. know, maybe people want to say they've experienced that. I've experienced it. And I know the good and the bad that happened to me. So it's not something I want to experience. Again, I can have an incredible relationship with somebody mm -hmm. and not be married. I feel like marriage at times, and I'm not knocking anybody who's married. It mm -hmm. didn't work for me. I'm all for anyone it worked for. But mm -hmm. I feel like marriage at times becomes very much like a business mm -hmm. thing. And what I found with marriage is, easy to get into and harder to get out of when you're dealing with lawyers and this and that it just gets really complicated it's just like i don't i don't feel like i need that anymore what and, and y'all both rich too though that's the day <laughs> don't don't make it seem like you know it's just complicated because both y'all so rich it's a lot of assets <laughs> and things to divide up and it's a lot to yes to break up and make mm -hmm. sure mm -hmm. things are, are fair and it, it gets it, it could get complicated what is lala looking for are you looking for somebody younger older not in the industry doesn't play basketball in the music industry a regular dude what would lala prefer I think, like, I don't have this checklist of, like, what I prefer. I, I think I'm a really cool, down-to-earth person. I just want somebody I can vibe with. It's mm -hmm. less about somebody, like, what you have. Obviously, I want somebody with ambition and somebody that's mm -hmm. doing something with themselves, but I'm good. I want somebody, like, I could sit and have a conversation with, I could vibe out with, have fun, laugh, be spontaneous, do fun stuff. It's not just, for me, it's not like, oh, how much money does he make? Mm -hmm. Oh, what car he got? It's like, that's not it for me. Would you date another athlete? I think I would stay away from the NBA. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Now there's other reasons. Like, I don't want to be on the block. I don't. I think the NBA. MLB, no, NFL, yeah, I'm still, soccer. I'm, I'm still, but you know, Lala, isn't still, it? You are, you are in a space <laughs> where you can make a decision on what you want to do in your own time based yeah. on whatever. Because it's not like you have to. You know, we were just talking about this the other day with mm -hmm. Jamil Hill, and these okay. are conversations that we have. But you have your son. Mm -hmm. You know, you're good with that. And then financially you're good so it's not like you're looking for somebody that has to check off yeah. this because you are stable already but of course you want somebody ambitious I want somebody ambitious that has something going for themselves mm -hmm. but it, like a lot of females it's like oh he got this much money and that's that's all it's based on like well, what about the personality what about do you vibe with him it's mm -hmm. just like yo I want to introduce so and so yo he got so much money like that's it and right. I'm just like alright that's cool but yeah, there's money out there, but I want to be able to vibe with you and talk to you. There's a lot of mm -hmm. guys with money out there that can't even hold a conversation. Yeah, right. So what are we going to do? Ride in your nice car in circles? Like, I got, I got a nice car. <laughs> yeah, let's go in circles. Like, <laughs> How much parental paranoia do you have raising uh, Cayenne? Because um, he's on his way. Everybody his can way. clearly see that. Yeah. Chris Brickley said he was amazing when he was training him. Mm -hmm. I saw it when he said that, which was so so awesome. Yeah, with Cayenne, you know, I, I keep a close eye, but I want him to still live life and be a 15 year old it's also you know growing up in in brooklyn is different too like mm -hmm. i just gotta make sure he's in the right places where he needs to be because he's 15 he wants to hang out he wants to go to certain places and play basketball and not really understanding sometimes why he can't just do what everybody can do mm -hmm. all the time and now it's to the point where everyone's having like sweet 16 parties and all this stuff and they'll be like oh my is a party in queens and, and somebody's whatever apartment complex and this and that and i'm like Ugh, like you could go but I just want to have somebody outside even if they don't go and he's like well then I don't want to go because he doesn't want to feel like he's walking around with eyes on him and stuff like that he's so low well, key so him. just send the uncle that's yeah, what that's, I to do send the so uncle funny. he'd be outside that's what it is so the <laughs> he found out but the funny thing is so he went to a party a sweet 16 <laughs> and I was like I'm going to have somebody in there, but I'm not going to tell them. So the person was in there low. And I'm not spying on them. I just, if anything goes Security, down, a lot of these parties up. getting sh shot up. A lot of stuff is That's happening. Right. So I'm like, I just, just in case. So then he's getting ready to leave and he was getting in the car. He's like, Ma, some guy approached me and was like, had my address on the phone and was like putting me in the car and stuff. He was like, did you have like security there or something? I'm like, the guy blew my cover because he just wanted to make sure he got in the car and everything like that. But now, so he found he just out. got in the car and some random guy. No, 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 no. Him. The guy was like, the guy told him, I guess after was like, okay. yo, I work with your mom. I just want to make sure you get it. Cause he was looking like, mm -hmm. I still wouldn't believe like, that if I was He was saying. like, I work with your mom. No, but he called me before okay. he got like, ma, this guy's showing me like the car destination. But so he blew it up. My point is, okay. but he was just like, ma, why you didn't tell me? So then I was like, well, he wasn't inside. And he was like, I think he was inside. He just doesn't mm -hmm. like the extra attention. My son it. is so down to earth and humble and chill. He doesn't like all of that. But he has to understand at certain times, just got to be careful. It's a different world out here. Right. Yeah. Your son started dating now. That, that's the thing. No, thing. he has not. Why say so fast? Because he has Everyone asked Come me that. Like, down, he, he has it. He Come has down. it. I was talking to some kids <laughs> yesterday. It was like, has he been having girls over stuff? 
He's just very low-key quiet. I'm not saying he's not into girls yet. He probably is and just not telling me, but there's been no females at the house. He hasn't asked me to, like, go on a date yet or anything like How that. How are you going to so. act when that happens, though? When he goes, Ma, I, I want to go to the movies. Or, Ma, can so-and-so come over and watch a, some, watch a show? No, I'm going to be cool. I'm, I'm a cool mom. Like, I'm going to be cool with it. Y'all not going to be in a room with the door closed. That was a whole other discussion I had with somebody yesterday. Like, I don't think at 15 you need to be in your Mm-mm. bedroom with the nah, door closed. No like, what are y'all doing with the door closed? You be in the living room. But other kitchen. people was like, why? It's not a big deal. I'm like, with the door closed? Nah. Like, we're not doing that. Living room, I'll I'll make the popcorn, I'll bring you guys the drinks, and y'all be good. <laughs> and I, and it's, I guess it's hard. Like, how do we teach our kids street smarts without them being in the streets? It's like, we bizarre. all came up in a, yes. in a different, different environment, different you know environment. what I mean? And the truth is, like, my son is in that environment. Mm-hmm. He goes to school in Queens. We live in Brooklyn. He's not sheltered. Mm-hmm. He walks around. He goes to the corner store. So it's not like he lives a life where he's behind everything. He's out there, and he'll... Go to different projects. His friends live in there. You want to play basketball in in different projects or whatever. And it's like, I got to let him live. And I love that he's well-rounded. And and guess what it's like to grow up all different kind of ways. But I also have to make sure that he's careful and understands that he he's a target. Mm-hmm. And he right. doesn't understand that yet. Does he take the train? He doesn't take the train. Hell no. But, um, he doesn't take the hey. train, but they want to jump in. You don't want to take the train to pay you. <laughs> Yeah, I still take the train. <laughs> you take the train. <laughs> I do. Oh. Well, my mom works for transit. I've been taking the train my whole oh, okay. life. But so still, I'm, now you take the train? I was just with saying that, that. With that Fendi jacket on? <laughs> I was just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying the other day that um, when I start my new show, it's at 10 a.m. Okay. And the traffic's going to be so bad You're going into town that I really might have to take the train. Wow. If I if I have a choice between two God hours driving <laughs> God bless or thirty you. minutes on the train, yeah, I get it. I I'm gonna take you. the train. I for 30 feel you minutes. on that. But you what hoodie up, just all. No, I, people be talking to me. One and guy sat do. next to me the whole. I was trying to read a book and just and sat just and talked to you the whole time. I think it's just a faster way to. No, get No, it is a faster way. Cayenne, I don't I don't feel comfortable with the train. Right. But he's you know they want to jump in Ubers or now you got friends that drive and mm-hmm. that I'm just like oh my friend drives it just it could get tricky. Just yeah. tell him that he has to stop moving like a. NBA player now. Right, right. That's it. Get used right. to it. The security mm-hmm. and everything else. Yeah, because literally when I tell him about security, or like, so he's like, I don't want to go then. Mm-hmm. Like, he doesn't want... Some kids love that. Also, like, the way he dresses, like, I could buy him stuff. He still want to just wear a Nike Tech sweatsuit. He doesn't want anything... He doesn't want anything that's going to make him stand out from everybody else. That's just how it. my son is. I mm-hmm. said my kids are rolling loud with security. If they want to go to... Every right. security, I don't care if they like it right. or love it. So I have they had a problem with it? They do, mm-hmm, but I make security yeah. play off them or I send an uncle with them or somebody like that. Right, but right. I, it's for my calm. Yeah, that's And they're like, yeah. you want them backstage VIP passes, right? Right, so you then know? you need so this, this, this is security. A, you want that? This exactly. is what you get. Exactly. Now, let's talk about Rikers Island because we saw that you've been doing an yeah, initiative. It was there yesterday, as a matter of fact. So you were doing about- that on the low, it feel like. <laughs> you know, the thing is, like, I just feel, I, I, I've been saying it, like, it's a double-edged sword when you do stuff because on one hand, when you talk about it, it's like, Oh, you're just doing it to talk about it. Mm-hmm. But it's like, if you don't talk about it, then how do you get resources or more mm-hmm. funding right. or sponsorships, whatever? Then when you do talk about it, you're bragging. And then if you don't talk about it, yeah, it's low and it's great and you're doing it from your heart. But then when you need to pull some necessary That's strings, right. nobody knows what you're doing. So mm-hmm. it came out on its own. And then once it came out, I was like, I'm not ashamed of it. I'm proud of what I'm doing. And now that people know about it, I've received so much help from especially just New York, the community here, whether it's restaurants providing food, Emory with Pumas for everybody in there. Shout out to Emory. Emory. Mm -hmm. Just so many people just like, what are you like calling me? What do you need? I got you. What do you need? And Mm -hmm. it's just been been so helpful. So what is that? So tell us what it is. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. So the initiative initially was Fatherless No More, which was started by a pastor, Pastor Tim Johnson, who you guys should definitely have come up here one day. He's incredible. And he was a pastor out of Orlando. He literally said one day, God spoke to him and said, you need to go to Rikers. And he didn't even know anything about Rikers. He lives in Orlando. Mm -hmm. He got in an RV and drove to New York, pulled up to Rikers, basically came in, like, I guess the visiting room and was like, God called me here. Everyone's probably looking at him like, what are you talking about? He got with the right people. They were like, all right, we'll let you do. At this point, Rikers was just chaos, a total, total chaos. They're like, we'll let you do whatever. He parked his RV inside Rikers Island, which has never been done before, and literally was just going in every day with this initiative and talking to a group of young men who are fatherless and finding their father in in God and and, in Jesus Christ. So that's how it started. So I came in and watched what he was doing, and I was like, this is incredible. And then I kind of just 
pivoted. I worked with him a lot, still work with him, and then I kind of pivoted into kind of creating my own initiative out of his, which mm -hmm. is just about like life skills and re-entry and tools you need just in life. You'll you'll be surprised how many of these young men that I'm working with, you know, don't have parents, definitely don't have fathers, never been told I love you, don't mm -hmm. even know how to talk to certain people or feel that love and just teaching them like you guys are worthy to be loved and you guys are great people and just loving on them and giving them life skills and it's been it's been a life-changing experience for me we saw a little baby pop up yeah which i thought was incredible like little baby hit me his album came out he's like la you know i know i know what you're doing i was like would you come up he was like of course i'm like he's like i want to come the day my album drops and i'm like you could be anywhere in the world mm -hmm. and you want to be here and he was incarcerated before and really spoke about his experience and the young men were so, you know, excited mm -hmm. to to see him there. It was it was incredible. And I do want to say something else because, you know, a couple people were asking me. They were like, you know, the young women need help as well there. Yeah. And I was like, the, it, not the issue. I'm gonna make my way there. I was introduced to the initiative through the young men, the 18 to 21 population mm -hmm. at the RNDC building. So that's how I was introduced to initiative. So I started there, and it's been great because when I look at 18, 19 year olds, I see Cayenne, I see my son. So mm -hmm. I know how to talk to them. I know how to kind of be like a, a mom they never had or a sister mm -hmm. they never had. Mm -hmm. And I'm working my way to the female facility as well, but that's the only reason why I haven't done it there yet. It's just mm -hmm. I started there. Like, you guys gotta give me time. Like, I'm gonna get that going. And then of course I wanna talk to the young women who I know need just as much support, mm -hmm. you know, um, as well. So I'm trying to make my way, but it that's, takes up a lot of time. Yeah, that's going to make so much sense, especially with this yeah. Antoya Brown dot of coming. Course, like, of yeah. course, of course. And just thinking of everyone we can bring up there to talk to the female population as well. But it's life changing. Like they tell me all the time how I've changed their lives. But I'm like, you guys have changed my life. Like to find like real purpose. Like I've always given back, but like to find real purpose is like a different different kind kind yeah, of Yeah, because I can imagine feeling that they feel forgotten and not cared yeah. about in, yeah. at Rikers Island. Yeah, 100%. And it's just like, you just hear so many negative. Every day there's a story about Rikers, negative, negative. You never hear anything positive. I thought when I walked in there, it was just going to be like people running right, through the right, hallways, right. just slicing each other up. And I'm not saying things like this don't happen there. Obviously, we, we read about them. I'm there, so mm -hmm. I know about stuff that happens, but there's so much positivity coming out of Rikers as well that you just never hear about. Mm -hmm. So many programs, initiatives, and kids really, I deal with the younger population, so when I say kids, I mean 18 to 21, who really have changed their lives and like really re-entered into society and became great. I found jobs for some of the mm -hmm. kids in the program, you know, just helped them re-enter into society and do great things. Like, it's it's been some amazing work going on. It's yeah, not easy to get out of jail and try to get a job either because when you have to fill out that form or it's application... It's horrible. And mm -hmm. they ask right. you... Right, and that's where I step in because then mm -hmm. it's, like, about who you know. And I got a lot of people that owe me a lot of favors that mm -hmm. I've never cashed in on. So I'm like, I got a kid who works really hard. Put him in the back of your restaurant. Can he work at your sneaker store? Can mm -hmm. he do this? Can he intern? And I have one of the kids who's my intern, so I can't talk about it and not, then not do it. Mm -hmm. you know, in my own business. So we're always trying to find opportunities for them. And also I go even further. Like I go to the court with them. I talk to the judges on their behalf to speak about what they've done in the initiative and how wow. they've changed and just really trying to make a difference. No, I've never been locked up before. <laughs> no, I've never been locked up. I probably, I probably, I probably should have been. Now I've gotten in fights before, but I never got locked I never got locked up before. Thank God. But yeah, I've been in some shit before. Are you going to document some of this so that people can actually see it? I think eventually, I think it would be cool to document what's going on. I know Pastor Tim is working on a book and a, doc a documentary as well for my part of it. I think I think it would be good, but I just want to make sure they're comfortable with that. Right now, you know, with, with this group of young men, you got to build trust first. Like, they mm -hmm. could read through it. They tell me all the time. When you first started coming, we was like, oh, celebrity, you want to take a picture? Like, they keep it real with you. They're going to tell you the truth. They're like, but you come so much. I go every week, like twice a week. On average, sometimes I'm doing 20 hours a week at Rikers. Mm -hmm. wow. No phone. I'm in there without my phone, just with them. they like, you've proven to us time and time again that this is real for you. Like, this is not just a photo op or this. And, I mean, I love them. And one of the kids yesterday, he told me, I was so touched. He was like, Lala, he was like, I'm going to be real with you. He said, outside of my mom, you are the greatest person I ever met in my life. Wow. And I was just like, <laughs> I get emotional saying it yeah. now because it's like, that comes with time and trust and love and people mm -hmm. really believing in you and people feeling like I didn't believe in myself. I just thought my life was over till I met you or I met Pastor Tim and y'all just made me feel like I matter again. 
Like, that stuff is deep. You well, mad people feel that way about you. That's why you and everybody's wedding all the time. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> it's except, true. Except my own, because I'm never getting married again. <laughs> but, yeah. but especially okay. so young, too, because it yeah. could be just a stupid decision. You're yeah, in a lot of it is just wrong place, wrong, wrong time, friends. Mm-hmm. A lot of it is gang gang stuff, mm-hmm. you know, being influenced by whatever Not wanting gang to tell on somebody else. Yeah, exactly. It all of any, that. It could it's be a lot even a wrongful conviction. It's a lot of that. Like, mm-hmm. it's not just, you know, I mean, there's some of that in there, too, like, murders whatever but a lot of it is just that and just understanding like be a leader not a follower and look what it, where it's gotten you and just just loving on them some that's people right. you'd be surprised there are people in this world who never even heard somebody tell them i love you that's like real. they never heard those words and things that we could take for granted mm-hmm. makes you, it different you ever feel like people don't get the whole totality of la la because you don't show that stuff mm-hmm. um, you purposely don't show that type of stuff i, I really the other things you do in business, all the things you might do for people. Just... Yeah, um, sometimes I feel like that, but then it's like, that's never been my motivation behind doing mm-hmm. it. It's like, same thing with any th- acting. My motivation is not to get awards and things like that. But when you do, when you do, when I got nominated for NW, it's like, oh, it's a great, that's a great feeling. And you feel like, wow, people are recognizing it, but that's not what you do it for. So mm-hmm. I'm in there because, as I said to you guys before, it's changing my life. Mm-hmm. It's giving me a purpose. So whether people recognize it or give me, Accolades, I don't care about that. It's changing my life. It's changing who I am. I said, you know, after my divorce and everything, I was going through a period where you feel kind of lost. Like, okay, what's Mm -hmm. life now? Like, I went from this to now this. I'm on my own. Like, this is a different space for me. So to find purpose in something else... It's changing my life, so mm-hmm. that's what matters. Do you still have to audition for roles? Yes, I do. Not all of them. Not all <laughs> of them. I get a lot of offers, but mm-hmm. when you get to those roles that you really want to fight for, mm-hmm. then yeah, you got to audition. You're in a Kenya Barris movie coming up yes. too, right? Yes. What's, so it's a comedy. So it's a comedy. It's myself, Eddie Murphy, Nia Long, Lauren London. It's Jonah Hill. It's yeah. an incredible cast. That's I amazing. mean, that was amazing. Young Miami in that too, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She, she's in there. She, she's in there. Um, no, she's in. No, 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 no. She's in um, a movie I did with uh, Gar. Wait, wait. I just did a movie with Gabrielle. No, she's in that one. She's yeah, in that yeah. one. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I did those two movies at the same time. So yeah, she always says I, that's how her and I got so close. It's so funny because people will see us and be like, "How are y'all like this?" <laughs> but when you're on a set of a movie, you become close with the people you work with. So she was in my hotel room every day. I would be coaching her on the lines and doing everything. So her and I, we were very close because of that. But yeah, that movie's gonna be gonna be incredible. And Eddie Murphy. I mean, I had a moment where I was like. Yo, I'm in a movie with Eddie mm-hmm. Murphy. Mm-hmm. Like, when you look up and it's Eddie Murphy standing <laughs> right there, like, that's never going to get old. I'm mm-hmm. like, yo, that's Eddie Murphy right there. And he's like, hey, Lala, how you doing? I'm like, nah, this is crazy. Eddie Murphy knows who I like. This is wild. But it's going to be incredible. So that's coming out probably uh, around January, February. Mm-hmm. And then Gabrielle Union and I, that was the other movie I was talking about. We got a Netflix movie called The Perfect Fine with Keith Powers where Gabrielle Union's character falls in love with Keith Power, so an older woman with a younger man and just everything that happens from that. Yeah, For one sure. of my good homies uh, is in that movie with Jonah Hill. Oh, and, okay. And, yeah, Andrew Schultz. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he... He, he thoroughly enjoyed seeing you in Young Miami on the oh, set all the time. He, <laughs> <laughs> he, he thoroughly, he's like, I never see his exact words. I've never seen any. Sh- I've never seen no shit like that in my life. <laughs> we had a good time. Yeah, we had a good time. And there was a scene where we had to like dance, and it was, it was yes, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yes. probably what he was. I heard about it. About yes, yes. <laughs> That's probably what he was talking. About. He had a lot of white man questions to a, a his, his, his black friend about. Black women and you know. What was the question? Just give it. Eh, There's no need to say. I was just like you know, like he was very intrigued. Put it like I that. remember one time. Speaking of like sex scenes, I'm not gonna say who, but I remember one time I was doing a sex scene with somebody, and they would. And, well, you guys can figure it out. It was a white guy, and he was just like, oh, we yo. know who it is. It was yeah. just like, yo, <laughs> I never seen a body like this before. That's in my yeah, life. Like, yeah. How, <laughs> How does this work? I was just like, this is, this is crazy. Yeah. He said it defies gravity. He was like, it was just sitting there. It was just, it was just there. Like, <laughs> that's what he said. That's what he said. Goodness gracious. How is um, how's Shaka doing, by the way? So I talked to Shaka yesterday. Mm-hmm. Doing well. Definitely, you know, still in physical therapy. Getting mm-hmm. himself together. That was a real scary experience. And just, you know fighting and, and ready for the journey ahead and hoping that everything, you know, turns out the way it's, it's supposed to. Right. But he got so many supporters and mm-hmm. people behind him who know what it is, and um, we just going to fight and make sure that 
everything turns out the way it's supposed to. Absolutely. How do yeah. situations like that make you look at life? When those people yeah, that you come me, up with and you're like, whoa. It makes me never take life for granted, mm-hmm. understand what really matters in life. Mm-hmm. So, like, when we go back to giving back and doing things like that, what really matters, like, it just puts everything into perspective because, you know, we almost lost Shaka and that mm-hmm. was that. That's who started my career. That's mm-hmm. my family. That's who I've known since I was 15 years old. And I laid in a hospital with him every single day. You know, I was the first one at the hospital when it happened. So it's like you just life flashes right before mm-hmm. your eyes. And you're like, this can be taken away from us like that. And it's just something you never want to take for granted. And also, mm-hmm. you know, you know what uh, Kim K was your friend when you was going through your stuff. And mm-hmm. Now she's going through her stuff. So how are you as a friend for her? Is it very difficult or understanding? No, you know, I'm, I'm going to be who I always am, just someone here to talk to, always give real advice, give love, and just, you know, know that you're supported through 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 all of it. Um, and that's what that's what real friends do. It's mm-hmm. not a judgment thing. And I, I'm just there to be there for you, make you laugh when you need it, love on you, whatever you need. Just be there be there for, for your friend no matter what. I just saw you at the Usher concert. What, what, they, they wouldn't let her play. Oh land? my gosh! Like, this was that was, the, that was so, a horrible you're surprise. You're by yourself huh? in Vegas. Well, not by yourself. How did I know? <laughs> I you went there by, for her birthday. Okay, so let me tell you guys a story. I'll mm-hmm. keep it short. So basically, it was her birthday, <laughs> Friday. Mm-hmm. So we were surprising her to bring her to Vegas on Saturday for the Usher concert, but she didn't know I was coming. So I was like, I'm coming from New York. What's the point of me flying all the way to LA? Then so I'll just meet you guys in Vegas. So they're like, oh, you don't want to fly on a private plane? No, I don't. I just want to fly straight to Vegas. So I get to Vegas. She's calling me, just thinking I'm in New York. I'm like, yeah, so what you going to do? She's like, I think they want to take me somewhere, but I don't know. But the whole time I'm sitting in Vegas, so I'm getting dressed, hair, makeup done, getting ready to start the night, excited for the Usher concert. So then they call me. They're like, they're not letting the plane land because of wind. Like, the wind was bad in Vegas that night, and wow. the plane can't land. The plane tried three different times to land, and it wouldn't land. So they're turning back around. I'm like... You have to be kidding me. I flew from New York all the way here, and now I'm here by myself like for the Usher show. But the good thing was, I shouldn't say by myself, my cousin Dice happened to be what working Dice? on, yeah. yeah, she's working on a production. She does production now mm-hmm. on a reality show, and they were filming in Vegas. But she, I hadn't seen her because she was on set. She couldn't get off, so I called Dice. I was like, Dice, get to the Usher concert right now. Please don't make me sit and watch this Usher concert by myself. And she pulled a little quick one, two, came in her work work gear, and mm-hmm. we just watched Usher. So it worked out. Like, Dice and I got to see Usher, which, by the way, the most incredible show. Mm-hmm. Like, no, 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 no. I've been to concerts before. Like, this one is crazy. Like it's I'm back so, in March for everybody Yes, who back in March. I'm so glad that I got to experience that. And then we still, you know, made it fun. And, of course, at the end of the day, yeah, it was messed up that the plane couldn't land, but safety first. You know, want Absolutely. everybody to be safe. But it was the surprise that went completely. Yeah, that was a surprise for you. And, and I saw your outfit. I was like, okay, was that um, the planned outfit for the night? That was the planned outfit I was like, that's a night. cute outfit. Right, and so what happened to me was, because I was by myself, I gambled. I lost so much money this Damn trip. It, so I'm like, this is. it was an L for me all the way across the, across the Other board. Other than seeing the, co- the Other concert. Other than seeing the yeah. concert, which was, which was incredible. <laughs> Yeah. Well, Lala, we appreciate you for joining us. Of course. Then now, if they want to donate to Fatherless No More, what do they do? Yeah, you know, um, definitely reach out to me. People know how to get in touch with me. Mm-hmm. It's easy. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at Lala. Just reach out and, you know, um, we're all for it. Like, I do what I can. I don't ask anybody for anything, but mm-hmm. I am only one person. And I'm doing, you know, what I can. And when you get into, like, paying for lawyers and getting a lot of these young men off some public defenders into paid lawyers who... Not nothing against public defenders, but saying paid lawyers who really can make you know even more of a difference. It costs money, mm-hmm. and I've put up all my own, and I'm on my own now. I, I ain't got Melo there to just mm-hmm. say, Yo, Mello, cut this check. So anyone who wants to help, I will gladly accept any help for sure. All right, and you don't uh, get no. Uh, no, what? I'm about you don't get no. Uh, what's the thing called? <laughs> what support? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's not alimony, is it? I do. I, I'm doing for the child. I'm doing for... well, but my point is, I can't just say, "Can you write a check so I can pay for all these lawyers right now?" No, I'm not doing that. So anyone who wants to help, they can. Gotcha. Help. Gotcha. Yes. All right, and uh, next year. Mm-hmm. January, February, you, you doing a movie, anything like that? So next year was when BMF will drop. So I'm excited for that, to promote that. And then also the Kenya Bears, Eddie Murphy. Oh, perfect. The Gabrielle Union what com- do you need, movie comes out. Well, if you got any time, what do you, what do you, you, got any time and you feel like, you know, something. you just want to... Stop by, oh, you know, hang out in the morning, you know. <laughs> you got some stuff to promote. You know oh, what I mean? Oh, oh, 
I she get it now. Oh, yeah, I get it you know, now. Why not? You know? Oh, okay. Just get up early a couple, yeah. couple days out the week. Yeah, you know what I mean? Just, you know, we got stuff to promote. Damn, that's a, that's that's big shoes to fill right there. That's going to be... That's gonna be you but you're one of your OGs. You Don't yeah, act like you're not I, one no, of the best no, to ever I, do this. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I will come and hang out with okay. you guys, but I'm just making it known that that's big shoes to fill right now, there. Now, what, what days? What, no, I know, what days? What days? I'm busy. What days? days. Oh we'll get you breakfast. They schedule okay, it now. Car service, maybe. I appreciate that. Maybe. Maybe. Depending if Maybe. you need it. Another train. train. <laughs> y'all need to make a, y'all, y'all y'all also need to make a donation as well. No, but I will come and support okay. y'all, and I will support you. Thank you know, you, I Lala. hit you on everything that you have going on. But thank I love you, so you guys. Much. You know, you guys are like, it's like just coming to hang out with my family. It never feels like working. Just thank you for no matter what I have going on, y'all always just show so much love and support. I do really appreciate it. And that. you got to book a guest, so... Tell Kim to come. <laughs> Tell Kim never to come. Not his instructions. No, Kim never been there. Y'all never had Kim up here? Uh, I don't know, know about that. that. Wait, what happened? You used to talk shit about Kim? No. Nah, oh. I think, I, you know, I, I, Look, I, I, uh, I like him. I, 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 Look. <laughs> I, I, I do. I, I like Kim. Okay. I think, I think Kim... I, I think you have to respect what they've built mm-hmm. over there. She said his headphones recently, so... Yeah. Oh, that was nice. Yeah, she does. The Beats. Yep, yep, yep. That was nice. Or maybe nah. Tracy said it, but, you know, it nah, came she, from Kim. She probably... No, no, we got to bring her up here. All right, we'll okay. work on that. It's Lala. It's the <laughs> Breakfast Club. Good morning. Thank you.